Καλησπέρα και πάλι. Όπω σα ανέφερα και με το διάλειμμα, θα συνδεθούμε με Βρυξέλλε με μια πολύ καλή φίλη τη Σισίλια Πόμφελντ Άιλ, η οποία είναι γενική διευθύντρια του Digital Europe. Η Σισίλια έχει στηρίξει το συνέδριο τόσα χρόνια όπω επίση έχει στηρίξει τον ΣΕΠΕ όλα αυτά τα χρόνια με τι θέσει τη Ευρωπαϊκή Βιομηχανία Φυγή Τεχνολογία που και εμεί μεταφέρουμε ω μέλο του, του Digital Europe στην Ελλάδα. Σισίλια. Yes, hello. Good afternoon, Yanni. Nice to see you. Good afternoon, Cecilia. Good evening from Athens. Good evening to Brussels. Thank you so much for joining us here. Thank you so much for the invitation again. Uh, it pleasure. was, I must say, I, I missed the I missed the trip to uh, to Greece. I hope to be there next year. Definitely, yes. So I'm I'm going to speak a little bit on uh, on the on the recovery um, as you most. Uh, You, you know very well, Yanis. Um, digital Europe has been working um, with the digital recovery plan, um, and uh, Yanis is actually a part of our board and has been a major player in this. Um, uh, the EU has actually lately um, dedicated 750 uh, billion euros to uh, to recovery of Europe, and um, we have been quite uh, amazed to see that. Uh, Uh, of course, uh, we would like to take credit that uh, we have been quite involved in, uh, in getting 20% of those uh, funding basically de uh, dedicated towards digital. Um, I'm unable to see my slides. I don't know if you see my slides uh, on slides. the screen. If not, I will simply... Oh, thank you so much. Okay, so you can just uh, turn to the first slide, please. Uh, Chris, thank you so much. Yeah, so Ursula von der Leyen has been a, been a, been a quite an amazing leader. Uh, she made it very clear when she stepped into office that, that this is the digital decade. And, um, and during the recovery, we were uh, very close to the Commission and to the Council, uh, basically discussing, you know, the importance of digital and also realizing that many, uh, many countries uh, are underdeveloped uh, in digital and that there needs to be a heavy investment basically to make sure that Europe becomes more resilient, that, you know, schools can basically uh, uh, deliver training to, to, uh, to children from home, that we can actually have our goods and services transported across borders. Um, and there was a, also a great knowledge in, 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 in how digital could basically also be a major player in finding a vaccine, uh, how it could be, uh, um, how we could basically track the, 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 the spread of COVID, et cetera. And as you see here, I think we can say that the European Union has really taken it extremely serious and say this will be uh, the digital decade, the digital and green decade of, um, of Europe. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, what we actually, if we look a little bit towards uh, Greece, um, we can only say that uh, on numbers, on, on, on every uh, parameter, Greece uh, is very low uh, on digitalization and uh, we hope to see really a heavy uh, investment also from the EU to, uh, to Greece on this. However, we must say that uh, on skills, Greece is quite, uh, you know, uh, quite advanced and uh, have a lot of young, talented people. And I would say if I had one thing I would invest in and only one thing, I would definitely be in skills because without the skills, you cannot solve the problem. You cannot utilize the connectivity. You cannot utilize the AI, the data. So, so this is, of course, extremely, uh, extremely important. In Europe, we see actually that um, in, 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 uh, in cities, you have a, a coverage of uh, only 14% will not have broadbands across Europe, whereas if you have rural areas, you will have about until 40% of the population not able to connect uh, to, for example, schools and other things. I was in Germany, so it's not only Greece. Uh, I was in Germany uh, where we really saw that um, many of the rural areas could simply not connect. So there is a kind of, a, there's been a, a lack of digital investment, a resilience building of European competence in digital. And hopefully by now, uh, with also the help of the European Commission's funding, we will see a huge uh, step forward. And thank you also to Yanis for his great contribution to exactly this plan. So let's look a little bit at uh, what, we, uh, what we did in digital Europe. 
Um, this is the result of 750 billion, 20% towards digital. And also we have what is called the Horizon 20 uh, funding, which is uh, you know more uh, the, the both on the excellent side, but also on building capabilities within what is called <clears throat> digital Europe program. I, I always say when when people steal your name, then it's when you have done a good job. So uh, there you basically see investment also in AI capability, high performance computing, and many of the skills, cybersecurity um, capabilities and skills. And uh, on top of, of course, the 20% that, uh, that we will uh, be investing. So what we do see now is that all governments need to deliver their digital investment plan to the Commission. So uh, at the moment, uh, I think Spain has delivered their plan with a 38% on digital and really a big, big, big uh, knowledge on, on how to invest. Um, France came in with their plan, but most uh, countries are still working on this plan. And I am sure that SEPTA is, uh, is really trying to uh, share their knowledge also with the government on, on how to go about this. <clears throat> it will be crucial that the plan is, that is handed in now really focus at the right drivers. And in that spirit, maybe turning to next slide, in that spirit, we, uh, we published uh, around a month ago a investment guide, you can say, we call it how to spend it. So what uh, we, we, we also saw that many governments, but also the EU, is that they said to us, you are digital savvy, you know exactly how to, 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 uh, to spend uh, these funds, but we actually, uh, we actually have uh, very little experience. So if you can help us to understand what are the major drivers of the economy that we need to restore. So these are the five areas that we actually picked out. So it's the digital education and skills. Here we mentioned three specific areas. We look at digital upscaling and reskilling. We know that before the crisis, actually 52% needs to be it needed to be reskilled within the next five years. We also know that 13 million people are losing their job in, in, for example, tourism, which will have a high effect on, on Greece, Spain, and other countries. So how do we make sure that we, we reskill people from, for example, uh, suffering sectors to jobs where they can have a higher value add? Uh, in fact, um, service jobs uh, in the digital sectors has around 40% more value add to the society than other service jobs. Meaning that, of course, this will also bring uh, growth to, to the country. Then, of course, bringing schools into the digital age and using artificial intelligence to predict jobs of the future. Actually, Agoria, uh, the, the Belgium uh, Association, has um, developed an algorithm across different sectors, so from manufacturing to transportation, where they can predict what are the jobs that will be disrupted and, and what are the most likely job for people to actually be reskilled into what are the skills that they need that is closest to the skills that they have today. Uh, these type of tools, you know, they, it's not science fiction, fiction, it's actually something that we can do. And we would like to offer that to all gov governments that they can basically plan their reskilling efforts and make sure that all the citizens become a part of, uh, of the digital decade. Digital healthcare, of course, uh, one of the major drivers, both for, for public health, um, for uh, both prevention and for, um, for learning much more about ha handling pandemics. Then SMEs and scale-ups. Here I really want to mention a few examples in a minute. Digital transformation, innovation and green deal. I mean, if we are to reinvent society, we might as well do it in one of the areas that will be the highest growth area at all globally, which is, of course, sustainability. Um, and this is exactly what uh, what the Commission is aiming to do. And the last one, without infrastructure and, and without connectivity, not much of the potential will basically be realized. I urge you basically to download it. It's called How to Spend It. It is at our uh, website, digitaleurope.org. And, um, and it's very easily, easy to read and it has very concrete KPIs. And let's look at a few of those KPIs in, uh, in that uh, publication. Next slide, please. <clears throat> so uh, if we look at the KPIs, um, as I said before, we have in some areas, especially in rural areas, very low connectivity. 
meaning that right now we have some countries with nearly nine months of more or less lockdown down and children who cannot connect to their schools and teachers who basically cannot uh, uh, teach their children. We also see companies that cannot work, uh, you know, uh, in an efficient way. Uh, and that is actually in a digital age where we have digital twins that can basically do everything without uh, a human uh, human being on site. Uh, and we really see a huge potential. This is the digital highways. We've seen what um, infrastructure, physical infrastructure can do to growth. Now this is really time to to up our uh, our uh, digital infrastructure. Um, next slide, please. If we look at um, if we look at the the the, the SMEs, one of the major blockers is uh, of growth is basically uh, the lack of data. Uh, we know right now it actually is, it's a very positive stat here. We say that 11.6 percent of the world's unicorns are European. However, the truth is that without UK, this number is only five. And why is that not so good? Uh, is big only beautiful? No, but in, in digital scale does matter and data does matter. And right now uh, we see that Europe is lacking behind. And uh, what we think we should uh, aim at is at least that European has 25% uh, of the world, world's unicorns. And, and this is also why uh, on the 4th of uh, February, February, we will actually um, give the Digital Europe Unicorn Award. We have 23 countries competing against each other with their most innovative, cool company um, that is one of the future unicorns. Uh, and we will uh, we will uh, hand out the three winners on the fourth of February. Also, we see that only 12% of the SMEs are actually using data analytics. And why is data important? Basically, what we have seen in the countries that have been re very fast at at releasing, for example, public data, um, we have seen a huge growth. Uh, um, in, in these companies because they have the scalability. Right now, many of the unicorns, for example, in the health sector, they have to struggle. They have to go to one hospital to get a little bit of data. Then they need to get to go to the next hospital. But imagine if we have these data spaces with available data for growth, that being in digital tourism, for example, you know, where companies can uh, analyze and SMEs can analyze data across borders for many countries with a lot of data, uh, you know, really developing world-class AI and world-class uh, uh, digital tourism uh, um, uh, services. This would be quite amazing and bring quite a, a growth to the country. So making data available and really making sure that that uh, uh, that uh, that uh, you know 50% of our SMEs are actually using data for the value of their services. And uh, let's look at the last one. So um, digital skills, as I said before. It is a, it's quite amazing how much uh, giving people the right skills. I mean, this is important for them to have a job. And of course, this is kind of the basics, right? Having a job, being able to participate in the digital era, not only being a, uh, a user, but really being a creator. This is absolutely crucial for your understanding as a human being, but also for uh, the growth and the stability of our economy in Europe. Um, but honestly, it's also about we are a democracy. If we want people to um, to be a part of what is not a science fiction or future scenario, but actually is the digital age, then we need to make sure that they have a, a right to the to the right skills. We have seen, for example, just mentioning one uh, example uh, in Denmark, we have seen companies get together um, and basically giving teachers to schools uh, where children that have coding classes for two years mandatory in these schools. Companies coming in saying, okay, we need to find a solution for a recycling uh, solution for plastic, for example. Can you develop something like this? And the children does these amazing pr uh, idea hackathons and develop uh, apps basically for a specific thing. And first of all, it's creative. It's really developing them. Second of all, it brings them into the digital age at a very early stage, not only for fun and for play and for looking and being passive as a social media user, but really for creative um, 
super uh, creative and and uh, and solutions that are really worthwhile. Um, now, looking at um, at the last slide, uh, well, as I said, we basically can predict um, uh, the future the the future jobs, and we actually can give this to the teachers. So these are some of the areas that we really think that should be invested in. Also, we are discussing in Digital Europe and with Yanis, how can we basically also look at these countries that after the COVID has a, has a, a sector of tourism that needs another boost and can we actually find projects in this se sector to make sure that the recovery fund is not only something that goes left, right and center, but really goes to the people that need to join the digital era and, uh, and uh, recover the economy of, uh, of Europe. So this was basically a little bit of thoughts from Digital Europe. I hope that you um, that you were inspired and um, and you learned a little bit of what is going on in Europe. I think Europe has become a smaller place <laughs> since uh, since this COVID pandemic uh, hit us. And um, and you should know that uh, Greece through through SEPTA and through Yanis is very connected to Europe and to the other European countries. So. Thank you so much for inviting me, and uh, I'm always extremely willing to participate and help uh, SEPA and Greece uh, to uh, to be linked uh, to Europe and to the digital uh, economy of Europe. Thank you. Dear Sia, thank you so much for your presentation. You quite present what are the recovery plan for our industry, the digital technology industry in Europe. And we hope so that also in Greece, but all the other member states, that you are going to see that plan in detail and to fulfill all the promises you have for our digital Europe. Thank you.